I graduated high school. I was home. Uh, I was going to get a job. We didn't have, I wasn't going to go to college. I didn't have the grades anyway. And I, and you know, why not? I get a job and I'll, I'll live in Asbury and it'll be cool. And um, my sister says to me, you know, she had a beauty parlor. That was Angela's beauty parlor. She had a, uh, you know, pretty nice little uh, establishment. Like uh, her and two girlfriends and uh, they had sinks and whatever. And she had a nice business. She said, Danny, why don't you come? She was doing all right. She wants you to come to work for me. I said, Angie, what, what am I going to do there? I'm like, wait a minute. Last job I had was cutting grass. I was gardening, pushing the mower. I can do that, push a lawnmower, you know, trim the hedges. The first job I had was putting little rides on the ki the kids on the little kitty rides. Ring the bell, blow the horn. You know, I was 14 years old. So. I didn't know what to say, so I said, well, what would I do? She said, well, you know, you have to go to school. You have to go to beauty school. Man, this did not sit well with me. She said, but you'll have a job. Then a lot of people don't have jobs. You come out, I'll give you a job, you know. I'll pay for your way to beauty school and blah, blah, blah. So I said, I started thinking about it. My mother started working me. Right? My aunts all started working me because my mother had two sisters. It was like, yeah, there's a nest of vipers. You know, they were like the three sisters. Chekhov didn't know what the hell to do, wouldn't know what to do with these people. And so they started working me. And we want Danny Boy to get, you know, have a career, have something to do. I wasn't going to just sit around. I was the home. I was like the great white hope. All of a sudden, what am I going to do? Go hang in the pool hall? You know, next thing you know, who, what, I'm booking horses. Next thing I know, I'm doing, you know, three to five up in uh, Trenton. So I said, okay, I'll, I'll, try, I, 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 I'll try it out. So all summer, they're prepping me. Like, uh, you know, they're showing me this. They're showing me that. They're showing me how to cut hair. They're showing me how to do the pin, because my mother had no hair, hardly. She had, like, you know, she wanted the pin curls, and, like, you know, <laughs> my aunt, one of my aunts was as old as this. She wanted finger waves. Okay, this is like, you know, permanence. They had these machines that you wouldn't go near right now. They had wires coming out of these big, like, I'd scared the shit out of me. I didn't know what the hell it was. Well, you take the curlers, you stick it in there, you, and you clamp this thing on it. And then you plug it in. You're going to plug this thing in? Are you kidding me? You're going to kill somebody. So, anyway, long story short, I uh, get through the summer. She buys me a little kit, gets me a smock. You had to have a white smock or a blue smock. I wasn't going to wear a pink smock. Uh, didn't go with my coloring. So I go to this place, the Wilfred Academy, and up this big staircase, old building in Asbury, on the second floor, I walked in, pushed open the doors, and I just... Never had more respect for my sister in my life than that moment because there were 35 girls in there, all cute, all my age, maybe three or four guys. And it was like, it was like the gates of heaven opening. There was so, it was just so magnificent because you got to know the girls, you got to talk to them, you had lunch with them. You know, I spent four months or something doing this before I had to take my test to get my state license. And it was like, uh, it was great. And then I did. I took my license to test. And I, I passed my test and I got my license. And I went to work for my sister. And I was in the beauty parlor for like two years. 
And she and I was now she was giving me all kinds of I was doing everything. I was doing thirty five heads on a on a on a uh, uh, New Year's Eve, all kinds of fancy hairdos and this that we cut pictures out. And I went to Charles of the Ritz, you know, went to school there, worked there for a little while in, in New York on Madison Avenue. I was like, she says, you know, I want to I want to I want to learn I want to figure out how to do makeup. I want to put a whole makeup station because she expanded the shop three or four. Things we had three or four people working there. I was one of them. She didn't. She kind of like, you know, eased herself out so she could just be the boss. Didn't have to work much. Anyway, really good, really good. She said, "I want to make a whole makeup station here, where people could come in and go. If they're going out on a date or they're going out somewhere, they can get a really professional, like makeup job, eyeliner." You know, eyebrows. Get it? You know, maybe I'll get a girl in to do a facial kind of thing. And uh, but but I want you to go to school. She's always sending me to school. She wants me to go to New York to find a place where I can learn how to do makeup. So, the obedient young brother that I am, I go. I look it up. I look through all the research in the in newspapers or whatever in the film. I find a place called Queen Helene Beauty Supplies. And it was out of, like, a Vincent Price movie. I mean, seriously, right out of, like, you know, Mario Bava, where somebody put this together. You walk into this hotel lobby, and it opened up, and it was like, there was a counter with with all the Queen Aline stuff. And you expected a gypsy to come out. You know, somebody to come out and, like, start reading your fortune, you know? And there were a couple of, you know, Dames there, you know, like they were, you know, when I walked in, I said, uh, you know, uh, they wanted to, thought I was going to buy product or whatever. I, I, said, no, I, I was looking for some place to learn how to do this. Uh, and they say, well, uh, there is one woman who gives a private lesson. But she works at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. It's on Madison Avenue. Gave me the number. I called the woman. She met me at her lunch break. I went over there. I told her what I wanted. She says, I'm in the middle of this right now. I've got this whole semester just starting. If you want to enroll in the American Academy of Dramatic Arts, I could teach you at night, right? But I can't really do this unless you come here to the school and they won't let you take the class unless you're a student. So that's how I became an actor. 